Have you ever thought about where your produce comes from? Most grocery chains receive produce from various local and national farmers. In fact, there are about 3.4 million farmers in the United States today. But of that staggering number, only 45,000 are black farmers. At The Better Buggy, we are a proud group of Atlanta-based black-owned farmers, selling produce locally and nationwide. Our easy-to-navigate online platform makes it easy for you to make a one-time purchase or to simplify your life by subscribing to our weekly produce box. Whichever frequency you choose, you can order with confidence knowing you'll receive 100% organic farm fresh produce. If you're looking for a thoughtful gift for a loved one that they'd actually find useful, be sure to pop by our online store where you can snag a gift card your recipient can use to order their own produce and t-shirts. Ready to start supporting local black owned farms and making healthier food decisions? Visit thebetterbuggy.com now to start shopping. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, eviction and foreclosure has been an ongoing problem in America, especially since the lockdown in 2020. Well, the eviction moratorium is actually ending on June 30th. Not unless Congress steps in and do something and we know how slow they move sometimes. And, you know, this is something they really can work on now. So this is actually the CDC's eviction moratorium, which is set to end on the 30th. And of course, many are still struggling to pay rent. Many are still struggling to get assistance to cover their uh you know, back rent. And this is going to be going on all through 2022 and 2023, y'all. You can best believe it. So this is Slate, June 16th, 2021. Millions of Americans are about to lose their homes. And especially now that you've got the red states cutting off unemployment, that's going to create an even bigger homeless situation in America. All right, so more and more people started having trouble making ends meet and they felt trapped. They could apply for rental assistance from the federal government, but much of that money is, you know, it still hasn't gone um, from the federal government to the people. And to be eligible for assistance in the first place, you have to already have missed payments it's a risk. Meanwhile, the temporary protections like the Center for Disease Control and Prevention Eviction Moratorium, that's the form they have. And if you're about to get evicted, they tell you to take it to court. You know, I've seen mixed reactions from that. Some people said they were successful in stopping the eviction with it and some were not. So I guess it's just not a 100% guarantee. Okay, so um, the CDC Control and Prevention Eviction Moratorium are winding down. So what happens to the Americans who have been depending on these measures as they remain devastated by the effects of the pandemic? With a possible eviction boom just days away, um, a reporter spoke to an eviction lab in Princeton at the University of Princeton who focuses on housing evictions and homelessness on Wednesday episode. And wow. And this person who was supposed to be part of, they're a lawyer. Okay. So the CDC moratorium came about because policymakers were worried that the public health and economic crisis that had affected so many households, job loss, health issues, might trigger a cascade of events in which folks were unable to pay for their rent. They might then lose their home and in the, uh, the process face increased exposure to the virus. So in September, as of last year, shortly after CARES Act had expired, the eviction lab saw 
a big spike in evictions with the loss of the federal moratorium about two weeks. The Trump administration passed the CDC order that the Department of Health and Human Services um, to help try to buy time to keep people in their homes while they applied for rent relief and tried to find new jobs. And we know that's easier said than done. It came as a bit of a surprise that the federal eviction moratorium was being issued through HHS, uh, through the CDC, rather than through Congress or by executive order. It certainly took us by surprise that it did have an immediate dampening effect on eviction filings in certain parts of the country, but of the same flaws in the way the CDC order was crafted. It left out many parts of the country exposed to ongoing eviction filings. So there are many states, including our most populous ones, like Florida or Texas, where evictions have been going on in spite of the CDC moratorium. Uh, there have been numerous legal challenges to the moratorium by various realtors, associations, and state circuit courts, including the 11th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals and the 5th U.S. Circus, uh, Cir circuit Court, <laughs> yeah, I should say Circus Court, right, of Appeals in Ohio. That Department of Justice had been appealing so right now we have ourselves in a place where we have this sort of important but untattered band-aid. Well, we people don't need no damn band-aid. They need solutions, immediate solutions. You know, you got kids that are going to be put out on the streets too. Uh, that is the federal eviction moratorium. There are many more renters now than in a typical year who have fallen behind on rent in 2020 and 2021, which are not typical years by any stretch of the imagination. So we are preparing for the possibility that many families who are facing evictions earlier this year, but had received protection, may see their eviction process start up again when the moratorium lifts on June 30th. Oh yeah, you better believe a lot of these landlords are going to file that stuff the second it ends on the 30th. So Congress allocated $25 billion in December and then an additional $20 billion in 2021. This money has just started to trickle down in states. Many understanding from the National Low Income Housing Coalition was that about an average of 13% of that $45 billion has been spent down. So having an eviction moratorium in place is really important as an emergency measure to help ensure that the money reaches communities before the loss of homes. We are seeing this play out in real time where folks who have been you know, and an eviction filed against them have applied for rental assistance, but the eviction is being processed faster than they are receiving the money. Yeah, that, I would say that's problematic. So we're urging governments, both the federal, state, and local, to extend the eviction moratorium until emergency rent relief measures fully reaches communities. Wouldn't you think they would have figured that out as soon as the CARES Act came out? You know, this is what you have to do. You got to do this immediately. Have the forms readily available for the people. You know, I mean, they really dropped the ball on this big time. And like I said, I do understand the landlords want their money. And, and there should have been a program in each stimulus for the landlords then they would not have to be concerned about putting people out if they were at least getting some kind of compensation from the government. And I think that was a big mistake 
not to have that in any of the stimulus packages. But y'all, please tell me what you think about this. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.